Yes, welcome to this video. And in this video, we are going to be answering one question that was asked in the comments. And it was posted on the last video I did about power rails. So this question comes from Diza Bakwes. He's saying, please do a video on how to troubleshoot and understand the CPU v core circuit and screen backlight circuit. So before you get started to answering this question, I would encourage you if you have any question, you can put it in the comment. I'm going to go through all the questions and I'm going to be making videos answering those questions. So this is a very good question because for you to be able to troubleshoot something, you have to first understand how it works. So how do backlight circuits work? So backlight circuits are actually designed different in Windows and MacBooks. Now in MacBooks, the backlight circuit is designed on the motherboard. So the motherboard of a MacBook laptop has got a chip that makes all the backlight and just sends the voltage up to the screen. However, in the Windows PC, that circuit is designed on the screen. I think this is like this because MacBook laptops have got their proprietary screens. However, most of the Windows PCs, they do share the screens. So this is a laptop screen. And on this screen, we have got this motherboard. So this is the screen connector. And these chips do control the display of the screen. And this section controls the backlight of the screen. So inside this screen, there are LED bulbs that are designed in series circuit. So this is the chip that creates the voltage that it goes through this fiber and goes to these LEDs that then make up the light on the screen. So this chip works on the back boost converter principles. So back boost converters, these are type of inverters that take in a certain number of voltage and decrease or increase that voltage. So you can take a look at like the RAM power supply. It takes in 19 from the motherboard and makes 1.3 or 1.2 RAM voltage. So the back boost converters work by rapidly switching on and off, on and off this voltage that goes through the coil. So you can switch on and off, on and off this voltage over 10,000 times per second. And if you understand the principal working of the coils, when the voltage is switched on at such high frequencies, it creates what you call a magnetic flux around the coil. And when it goes off, that flux collapses back into the coil. So the backlight chip uses that principle by switching on and off the voltage which increases the magnetic flux around the coil and if it turns on and off, part of that voltage gets increased. And that's how you said the backlight voltage is able to be boosted from 19 volts all the way up to 40 volts or even 50 volts that is used to power up the LED lights inside. But what you have to know that the backlight such the LED screens is totally different in LCD screen, AMOLED screen, and OLED screens. So this circuit has to increase that voltage because the LEDs inside here need a lot of voltages for them to make light. And that explains why these screens are called LED screens. So they are called LED screens because they use LEDs to create the light that you see on the screen. However, for this chip to work, there are some signals and voltage that must be present. One of them is 19 volts, which comes down from the motherboard. And also it needs what we call LED enable. So LED enable, this is the type of signal that tells this chip to start working. And another one is called PWM. This is pulse width moderation. So this is the signal that determines the amount of output voltage depending on the brightness level on your screen. So whenever you are adjusting the brightness of your screen, you are actually changing the PWM signal on this chip. So at the back side of this motherboard, these signals are indicated here. So you can see on these test points here, this test point is called LED PWM and this one is called LED Enable. So whenever you have a laptop that the backlight does not work, it is either this signal is missing or this one. And in rare cases, it could be the 19 that is missing. So if you're troubleshooting a backlight problem, you must come onto the motherboard of the screen and measure for 19 volts. Either you could find 3.3 here for the screen or 19 volts for the backlight. So after confirming that you already have 19, the next thing you have to do on this screen is come and measure for LED PWM and LED Enable. LED Enable should have 3.3. And LED PWM should have between 1.7 to 3.3 depending on the brightness level. In most cases, if you have 19 but you still don't have light on the screen, it's either one of these signals that is missing. The challenge of troubleshooting these signals is that these signals come from the chipset. However, the chipset is not something that you can easily troubleshoot 
to fix these signals. So we have a way how we can bypass the chipset and make this light turn on. So if you see that LED enable is missing, you have to inject 3.3 into the LED enable. And if you discover that the LED PWM is missing, then you have to inject 3.3 into the LED PWM. However, what you have to know that if you inject 3.3 on the LED PWM, your laptop brightness level will not be adjustable. So you will be adjusting on the screen, but the light or the brightness will not either decrease or de decrease. It will always be working at maximum. And if you're using that laptop either at night or in a dark place, it's going to be causing some irritation and pain to your eyes. So if you measure and see that you have 19, you have LED enable, you have LED PWM, but you still don't see light on the screen, then you must come and measure the output of this LED voltage. So you have to put your black probe on the ground and you measure the voltage on the output here. So the voltage here should be above 19. It should either be 20, 25, 30, 35, up to 40, sometimes even 50. So if you see that the voltage here is still 19, then that means this chip here is not boosting the voltage. And in that case, most times you have to just replace with another screen. But if you see that the output voltage is above 20 volts, but you are still not seeing light inside the screen, then that indicates that possibly the LEDs inside the screen are blown. And in that situation, replacing another screen will fix the problem. However, the funny thing is that if your laptop is missing LED enable and LED PWM, even if you change screens, the screen light will not be able to work. So troubleshoot your screen fiber. Sometimes a screen fiber with broken cables can be the cause of the problem, but that's very, very rare. The chances of finding such a problem are one out of a hundred. But what you have to know that you can only troubleshoot this backlight circuit when the laptop is on and the screen is plugged in. So the first thing you have to do is to see if you have the image inside the screen. And inside the screen when you put a light or when you put a torch, you would see some images inside the screen. And if you see the images but you don't see backlight, then you have to disassemble the laptop, you disassemble the screen and measure for these voltages. So that's how you troubleshoot backlight problems. So the first thing you have to confirm is the presence of image. Then secondly, you have to check for the main votes. Then you also have to confirm that you have PWM. And then you have to check the LED enable. So if you see that the one of these voltages are missing, especially LED enable and LED PWM, you can inject 3 volts in any of those signals and your backlight will be fixed. So for the MacBook, I have already made a video that shows how to fix that problem. And if you are interested, I have already put a link in the description. You can click the link and go and watch that video. I hope this video has given you some clues. So if you have any other question that you want me to do a video about, you can put it in the comments. I'll do my best to answer it. If you have enjoyed the video, you can like it, you can share it. And if this is your first time to the channel, you can also subscribe. So thanks for watching. I hope to see you in the next video.